so welcome uh, to our panel today, uh, our parallel session panel today. Um, we have a wonderful panel which is entitled The Folk and the Local. Uh, I, uh, all our presenters are here and we have some uh, participants also. So let me uh, first, uh, you know, good morning, good afternoon and uh, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, it's good morning from here in Italy, perhaps it's good afternoon in uh, Bangladesh. So uh, we have four presenters here, four papers, uh, Love and Longing, Love, Longing and Commemoration, a study of Chakma culture through the Ubu Gid, uh, which will be presented by Nidhi Chakma, who's uh, a researcher at Spark. Our second paper is Folklore as a Mirror, Cul Mirror of Culture, a comparative study between Shakespeare's The Tempest and Abu Ishaq's uh, Shurju Dighalbari, which will be presented by Muhammad Joshimuddin, uh, who's uh, an assistant professor at uh, Northern University, Bangladesh. Uh, the third paper is Bangladesh, Bangabandhu and Anti-Communalism, a glimpse from Baul songs of Netropona. Very interesting. Uh, Sh Shofiullah is a lecturer uh, at Sheikh Hasina University, he is a presenter of this paper. And finally, we have uh, the comic representation of Chittagonian dialect in Bangladeshi mainstream te television drama, uh, which will be presented by Shimul Bhattacharji, who's, a, who's an assistant professor at uh, Southern University, Bangladesh. So I welcome you all uh, to, the, to our presentations. Uh, so the first presenter, uh, Ms. Nidhi Chakma, who will be presenting on love, longing, and commemoration, a study of Chakma culture through the Ubu Gid. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, sir. Um, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, I'd like to share my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes. Uh, okay, welcome to my presentation today and thank you for having me here. Um, the topic uh, of my paper today is Love, Longing and Commemoration and a Study of Chakma Culture through the Ubu Gid. Yeah. So before I move uh, to the main topic, which is Ubu Gid, I would like to give a brief background of what CHD is about. Uh, abbreviation of CHD is Chittagong Hill Tracks. And um, as we know, uh, the indigenous peoples of Bangladesh are living in the northeast, northwest, south, and southeast regions um, of our country. And uh, among them, the most of the indigenous populations are living in the southern and southeast part of Bangladesh, which is 70% of the entire indigenous population. And among those indigenous communities which are recognized by the government of Bangladesh as minorities are the Muro, the Marma, the Tripura, the Kumi, the Lusai Chak, Kyang, Bom, Pangkwa, Chakma, and Tanjangya. Although, according to the researcher, most of the researchers that are more than and at least 45 ethnic groups living in Bangladesh. Um, yeah, so definitely I cannot escape this part, which is the internal war that took place in, from in 1977, and which has uh, ended after 20 long years of uh, civil war, we can say, which, is, which has ended in 2nd December, 1997, which is uh, known as the Peace Accord of CHD, also popularly known as the Parvatiya Chukti. Yeah, so um, I'd also like to give a brief history about what Chakmas are and uh, yeah, so I have divided this uh, history part into three sections. The first one would be the pre-colonial period because before the British colonization uh, was um, came over in the Chirongo Hiltrax area. So yeah, so Chakma history, Chakmas really do not have uh, any written transcripts 
our scripted history, all they have is the oral histories uh, and most of them are written, sorry. And uh, those oral histories are um, known as Bijok and Chadigang Charapala. These are also sort of folk songs, folk chakma songs. And uh, yeah, they believe it, it talks about the history of where the chakmas have come from. And then we have the Agartara, which is the scripted one, only scripted one, and uh, which is believed to be written by the ancestors of chakmas. Yeah, so um, if we move to the British colonial period, uh, the first uh, chakma king in this British colonial, under this British government was Sher Dalwa Khan. And the first schools, uh, first school in Chiragong Hilltrax was established in 1863. I'll be only pointing out the important things that, have, that has happened during this period. And on um, 1st September 1881, British government has for the first time divided the Chiragong Hilltrax into three sections, which are the Chakma uh, into three circles, the Chakma, the Mong, and the Boma. Um, that it ha they have also divided these three circles into three and 169 mojas because it was getting difficult for them to collect the taxes. So in order to ease it, ease it, ease it they have uh, um, they have announced Chirigong Hildress as an excluded area in 1935, and in 1900. Uh, oh, before that, they have definitely passed the 1900 Regulation Act for the Chirigong Hildress. Yeah, so after the post colon uh, after the British government has left post colonial period, there are also some important things that that, has that are uh, so important in the uh, in the com in the Chakma community. Um, yeah, so uh, after the colonization was over in Pakistan under the Pakistan government, Nalinaksha Roy was the first Chakma king. So um, it was he and the then Bomang and uh, Mong circle chief who uh, have proposed to the Pakistan government about the autonomy. And uh, finally it got accepted in 1956 and Chirogong uh, Hilltrax was again an excluded area. Then in 1960, we have, uh, uh, we, we, we might know, we, have, we might have heard about the Kaptai hydroelectric dam, which has caused the uh, maximum, uh, which has caused many of the indigenous populations living in uh, the Kapta area and most of whom were Chakmas. It has submerged 80,000, sorry, 80 lakh and 900, sorry, <laughs> extremely sorry, 81 lakh and 920 something acres. I'm extremely sorry, I'm getting, I'm messing it. Uh, so yeah, 125 mojas and 369 mojas and the 40% of the agricultural lands. So almost and more than 18,000 families become refugees. They were um, they were internally displaced, basically. They have not crossed the borders, although um, uh, many of them have been crossing the borders. It has been heard, but it, it is not documented, although. Yeah, so after that, and um, a 1917 war was there uh, where the, after Bangladesh got independent and uh, where the then king of Chakmas were, um, were uh, declared as a Rajapar because he was uh, against, uh, um, he was against the liberation war and uh, he was in, in the support of Pakistan government for some reasons that needs to be uh, explored. Uh, yes, so here comes the main point, uh, what Ubogit is about. Ubogit uh, is a traditional folk love song. Um, it's popular among the Chakma and the uh, Tanchanga communities. Today, although I'll be talking uh, all about the uh, Chakma communities because I, I, I am not that expert in the Tanchanga communities. Uh, so I'll be talking about the Chakma, um, about the Chakmas. So Ubogit, uh, Ubogits were considered as private songs. Uh, that is the reason why it was, um, restricted to be sung in front of the elders. Back then, uh, the songs are sung on a high note. It has a high uh, pitch uh, while singing and uh, it has natural lyrics. It doesn't have any specific lyrics. It changes uh, according to the persons or the emotions or the environments one was leaving. So the lyrics are uh, um, made instantly. It, uh, um, it doesn't recur any specific lyrics. Uh, although now the book is that we hear, which though really uh, are fixed uh, with fixed lyrics. Why uh, Ubogits are important? Because it depicts the social and communal values of the Chakma community. Um, yeah, 
So the Chakma language in, in Ubo Gid. The Ubo Gid has its folk diction and which is the reason it is important since Chakmas, all, all Chakmas have about the history is the oral literature. And um, this is one of the thing uh, that preserves the Chakma language, the folk dictions helps uh, in preserving the Chakma language. Uh, there are some affectionate terms and words that are used in Ubogit and I still use. Those are like Sikoporan, but it's a very affectionate terms. But now these are not, these words are not used because it, it seems it has become a sign of backwardness. And there are some phrases and idioms which are almost, um, uh, which has almost gone now from the Chakma languages, which... Uh, sorry to interrupt uh, you, uh, Nidhi, yeah. sorry to interrupt you. You have another two minutes. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'll finish uh, in that two minutes. Yeah. So yeah, definitely Chakma Ubogid has um, depicted its Chakma culture in it. It, it has. I have translated three uh, Ubogids in English, and in in those three um, Ubogids, I have seen um, the daily lives, the, the, the depiction of daily lives of the Chakmas and the stigmas or the patriarchy in the Chakma society different types of patriarchies. Um, yeah, so uh, my next point is Bangladeshi education system for or against the diversity. Uh, here, uh, the first one uh, I have pointed is state colonialism. Um, we all know how Bangladesh have fought uh, for their rights, and for their identities in 1971 in the liberation war. But the surprising thing is that after Bangladesh got independent, it has become the new colonial power for the uh, people for the minority people living um, in, in its country. Um, so um, it states uh, the state's homogenization as Bengali and the denial to indigenous existence is something more shocking because um, Bangladesh, which has the history of, you know, of being so protective about their identities, how come it became so you know, insensitive towards other people's identities and yeah. So it continues and uh, Yes, another thing is we all know about the International Model Language Day, which is another reason why we are having this conference today. And uh, yeah, but it was again shocking how Bangladesh government took 58 years long, you know, to understand the necessity of the importance of other languages who, who are, which are existing in, the, in its country for centuries long. And yeah, we all know how uh, the, the, uh, by the states and the governments, how these indigenous communities are being exploited in the name of development and security. So yes, also um, the, the basic things that we have in our country is like the education system is definitely the medium of instruction that we have is definitely, um, uh, you know. Oh, sorry, your time is up. Uh, so could you please conclude? Yes, um, okay. Um, and th this would be my last slide, and which is uh, which talked about how the indigenous students were getting educated right now become the subject of the split, colonial split, uh, how they are becoming the you know the inferior under the Bengali superiors uh, to supervise and master the uneducated inferiors who who can be from the majority Bengali population or from the indigenous populations. Um, at last, I would like to say is that it is very important to include the minority literatures and um, in the education system and also the textbooks that the, our children and the next generations are getting to uh, have a safer and you know inclusive uh, future. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Nidhi Chakma. Our next paper has a very intriguing uh, title, which is Folklore as a Mirror of Culture, a comp comparative study between Shakespeare's The Tempest and Abu Ishaq's Shurju Digalbari. Our presenter is Mohammad Joshimuddin, uh, Assistant Professor of Northern University of Bangladesh. The floor is yours. It's okay. It's all right now. Assalamu alaikum and very good afternoon to all. Uh, the title of my paper is uh, Folklore as a Mirror of Culture. A comparative study between Shakespeare's Tempest, The Tempest, and Abu Isaac's Through the Digital Body. So we know that uh, William Shakespeare uh, was an English poet and playwright, widely regarded as the greatest writer in the English language and the world's preeminent dramatist. <clears throat> the Tempest is his last play, somehow. He probably knew this as he was writing and producing it. The particular play goes over and wraps 
of all the 37 plays that, that come before it. It is uh, set on a remote island where the source of Prospero, rightful Duke to Milan, plots to restore his daughter Miranda to the rightful place using illusion and skillful manipulation. He conjures up a storm, the, uh, the uh, eponymous tempest to cause his usurping brother Antonio and the complicit king also of Naples to believe they are shipwrecked and marooned on the island. On the other hand, Abu Isa is a prolific novelist in Bangladesh. Almost in all the literary works, the central characters happen to be ordinary rural people, such as farmers, fishermen, boatmen, religious, riggers, bowl, uh, pain stocking chow, youth, and uh, distributed women that he had the opportunity to watch closely. Now I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, share the objectives of my study. The paper aims at comparing William Shakespeare, The Tempest, and Abu Isaac's Shurjo de Galbari, that is called uh, the ill omened house in English, based on adaptation of folklore, though there are some specific differences between these two. The comparative study focuses on how the uh, phrases The Tempest and Shurjo de Galbari symbolize the fate of the people, and in the name of Pir Poke goes devil, unculturedness, or boorishness, religion, and magic how one can dominate other, destroying their culture. And the final objectives of the study, destroying the folkloric culture, how the capitalists establish their colonial rules over the marginalized people, making them hegemonized will be another area of investigation of the study. And methodology of the study, just I would like to mention that the paper is obviously a qualitative in nature. Then I will skip these slides and uh, I want to share something else uh, from here. Folklore deals with some legends and personalities like Caliban in the Tempest and Jagon in Shurjo de Galbari to focus their culture. Folk tales, maids, legends, folk ballads, and folk speech. Folk musical instruments, folk dances, games, and shamanisms organi uh, organizing as folklore, encourages handcrafts activity and uh, custom design based on folk, uh, folk motifs and superstitions and folklore emphasizes to a great extent patterns of the living and folk ways. These are the adaptation of folklore. I'm not uh, going to uh, share it right now. Just uh, reading up uh, folklore, there are some benefits and there are some limitations also in folklore studies. But I would like to share something else from the text. In Tempest, there are numerous examples of phenomena which are not adapt, uh, apparent uh, to the characters on stage, but which are apparent to the audience. Both Prospero and Ariel are sometimes invisible to the characters, yet are visible and audible to the audience. It destroys the illusion entirely if the actors notice Prospero or Ariel when they are invisible or respond to them in any other way. Yet, of course, sometimes the characters do respond to Ariel and it is this contradiction that is very difficult to direct. In Act 1 and Sing 2, Ferdinand hears Ariel's song but does not actually see Ariel. Caliban's speech, be not afraid. The house is full of noises, sounds a sweet ear that gives delight and heart not. The Tempest um, is a complete fairy tale. The so-called fairy rings in old thrusters little uh, circles of a brighter green, within which it was supposed the fairies dances by night are now known to result from the outspreading uh, propagation of a particular of a particular mushroom, the fairy ring fungus, by which the ground is managed for a richer following vegetation. An immense deal of a legendary lore, however has uh, clustered around these uh, curious phenomena, popular superstitions attributing it to the merry uh, 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 round delays of the moonlight fairies in Tempest. Prosperity invokes the fairies as the Jamie puppets. We see it in Act 1, Scene uh, uh, 1, Act 5, Scene 1. Actually, uh, through this line, uh, we can understand that why Tempest is a fairy tale. 
Then in Shurja Dagalwadi is also a fairy tale. All the descriptions of Shurja Dagalwadi and the environment of uh, Karim Baksh are fairy. The first chapter describes the meat of the ill omen house and how posting the four spiritual sentries by the Fakir could protect the events of the house, the houses, and how also every year they needed to be changed, involving some kind of incidental expenses. Two things are evident here. Belief in uh, evil spirits or uh, ghosts by the literate or half-literate people, and the exploits of the religious man taking advantage of their unfo uh, unfounded belief. Now, uh, magic in uh, the tempest. We know that the magic is one of the major elements uh, of folklore. The tempest is full of music, singing, and dancing. Every act and every uh, scene has at least one musical element. Both Caliban and Ariel, uh, Ariel have sung some songs with different purposes. In Act 1 and scene, uh, scene 2, we see that when Prospero reaches the land of Caliban, Caliban welcomes uh, Prospero and his daughter singing a song. This is the song. Uh, then uh, in Act 3 and Scene 2, Caliban says, be not afraid. The earth is full of noises. If we go through the lines, we'll see that. Actually, these lines expresses about the values, norms, belief, and the folk belief of uh, uh, the island of uh, Caliban. Then uh, in Shakespeare's uh, most musical characters is Ariel, the airy spirits of the tempest. And he also uh, happens uh, to be one of the Shakespeare's most magical characters. Ariel has four songs in the tempest. He plays the pipe and the tabor. These are the folk musical instruments we know. And his exist and uh, entrance are almost always accompanied with music. He can also fly, turn himself invisible, and control the elements in other characters with his magic. Ariel song some song, uh, sing some song to take some people to prosper so that prosper can control them how he wants. So this is the Ariel song, one of uh, Ariel songs. Then adaptation uh, uh, music in uh, Shujo Degalbari. In Shudra Degalbari, there are 12 songs that are sung in different occasions. In, we know that in Bangla, once people sang a song while they collected wood and fire as known from a remote area and fishing in river or water tank. Once uh, we see in, in Shudra Degalbari, Shopi and Maimon sang this song, uh, burn, 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 uh, the fish hook, burn my neighbor's oblique look, then catch a uh, apparently fish to cope without iron uh, hook and cotton. Sorry to interrupt here. Uh, we have uh, two minutes left for your presentation. Thank you. I'll try my best. <clears throat> so yes. we know that folklore is an oral tradition. So telling the story, the speaker must have at least an audience. In the tempest, Miranda is an audience, and in Shujo Degalbari, Kashu, a son of Zygon and protagonist, and uh, her former husband, Korimbak. Miranda is told the story of, of the past to glorify the history of Mil, uh, Milan and Prospero exaggerates about Caliban's mother, Sakurax, and it is a technique of the colonizer. Then uh, we see that uh, similarly, uh, Kashu is told the story by his uh, father and his stepmother to make him timid, and Karim Baksh is a semi-capitalist in nature. Shafi's mother tells the first story of the land to Shafi and Maimon a daughter of Jaigun, uh, uh, that they can be rich culturally. So these are the uh, folkloric uh, elements. And uh, later on, we say that uh, magic, we know that uh, without magic, Prospero's uh, world is bleak and without imagination. It is clear from the start that Prospero is a powerful character in the Tempest and that it because of his magic. Similarly, uh, whenever we go to the uh, de Galbari, we see that in Shuja de Galbari, to make Kashu control, Korim Box calls a so called Fokir who is able to apply magic on Kashu. And uh, moreover, we, uh, in brief, we just uh, mentioned that uh, folk medicine. In Shakespeare's, uh, Shakespeare's day, the condition of medical science was very unlike that of the present day. As a result, we see that when Miranda feels sick and uh, Ferdinand becomes sick mentally, then Prosperity uses some modern treatment to make them cure. But Caliban practices. Uh, uh, dear presenter, your time is over, actually. So just uh, within a one minute, I'm uh, concluding. <clears throat> for uh, medicine, for his uh, treatment. Similarly, in Shudra Degal Bari, when Kashu becomes sick, Korimbach and Anjuman start giving 
rural treatment like Covidus, that is called the Ayurvedic doctor or Ayurvedic treatment. But Jaigun and Hatu decides to call a doctor. Now, uh, uh, within 30 seconds, I would like to say that at the end of the uh, end of the uh, play, uh, the Tempest, we say that Caliban is not allowed to be free. Why? Be uh, because he has practiced uh, his folkloric beliefs, his uh, tradition, norms, and values. On the other hand, on the other hand, in uh, Shuju Degal Bari, Jaigun is also has a belief. Whenever uh, it has mentioned that the uh, partition of 1947, uh, when everyone expresses their joys, but Jaigun is indifferent. These are all about uh, my presentation. Thank you uh, all. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm very sorry. My screen is, my camera is not working for some reason. Uh, so let me just uh, welcome our next presenter whose uh, paper is titled Bangladesh Bangabundhu and Anti-Colonial Communalism, uh, A Glimpse from Baal Songs of Netrakona. Uh, Mr. Shofiullah, please. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair of the session for uh, letting me present my paper. I am Shafiullah, lecturer of English at Sheikh Hassan University, Netrogona. I am going to talk on uh, how Baal songs of Netrogona region present Bangladesh nation, glorify Bangabundhu's contribution, and uphold the concept of anti communalism. The topic might be ambiguous and perplexing to you as how Baal songs can deal with historical and national figure or incidents. Let me clarify it. The Baul are a group of mystic minstrels of mixed elements of Sufism and Vaishnavism from Bangladesh, India, Bangladesh, and some other regions. Uh, there are two streams of Baul devotees in our country. One is Baals of Kushtia region, for example, Lalon Shai and Shirad Shai. And another one is Baals of greater Silet and greater Maimanshing regions, which include Hassan Raza, uh, Roshuddin, and so on. Uh, greatest Baal devotees of Netrakona region are Rushduddin, Jalaluddin Khan, Din Sharot, Ukil Munshi, Abdul Mujid Talukdar, Abed Ali, Chan Khapathan, Fokit Chan, Kangalini Sufia, and many others. Lifestyle of these Baal devotees, along with their songs, has a distinct quality which easily differentiate them from the Baals and Baal songs of Kushtia region. Let's see the most important characteristics of Baal devotees of Netrakona region. Kindly look at this slide. Baals of Netrakona are unlike Baals of Kustia in many ways. They usually do not run away from their familial and social life. Rather, they got married, gave birth to children, maintained social responsibilities, but uh, they have not differentiated them from their roots. They not only worship the Supreme Soul, but also reacted to social, national, and international issues. Another significant feature of Netrakona region Baal devotees is they are followers of their own religion and they respect others' religion. Even surprising thing is that many Muslim Baal devotees have written Baal songs on Hinduism and vice versa. As I was saying, Baals of Netrakona region responded to national and international issues. Uh, it might be an issue of dispute whether we can term them as Baal songs or not. Even many researchers categorize these Baal songs as patriotic songs, but like many other Baal devotees and researchers, I have generalized the term and included them in uh, Baal songs. Even, uh, let me mention one more thing. The definition which justifies the Baals of Kushtia is not applicable for how region bowels to a great extent. Even if we create a different yardstick for how region bowels, it is not quite easy to include all the songs written by bowel devotees and poets. In this paper, all the songs written by bowel devotees are generalized and considered as bowel songs. Now let's discuss how they present Bangladeshi landscape, a nation, and even Bangabandhu in their songs. In songs of Rashiduddin, Ukil Munshi, even Jalal Kha, they have used different metaphors to convey their Baal ideas, but the content was nothing but the wetland beauty of Bangladesh. Uh, let me give you uh, some examples. As almost all uh, the audience are uh, Bengali speaking people, so I'll give 
original quotation. Okil Munshi writes, Ashar Masha Bhasha Panire, Ubali Batashe, Badam de Katsayataki, Amar Niko Ashere. Roshudun writes, Tori Bayore, Shuzon Naya, Bellar de Katsaya. Okul Nodir Bishampari, Koiro Lebuya. Abdul Moditaro writes, Amar Gauger Amebari, Amar Gayer Ashe Pashe, Fossil Shari Shari. Amar Gayer Shari Pashe, Shoto Shoto Gau, Bill Bilanti, Nodinala, Mahiranai. Mazira now by. This literally presents the beauty of Bangladesh, Bangladesh, though metaphorically, it indicates uh, something else, something deeper. Dean Sharad, Abdul Majid Talukdar, Abid Ali, Fokir Chan, Kangalini Sophia, Ali Hussain, Baul Poet, Fozlu Rahman, and many others depicted different movements. Uh, for example, uh, the plight for uh, Jude cultivation, language movement of 1952, and the liberation war of 1971. Let me present some examples. Uh, Dean Sharot writes about the cultivation of Jude. He writes, "Hi, Ramadhar Bangladesh. Ki hoyle dasha? Sharbone she pater sashe. Deshe zar adur bishi." So he talks about the uh, situation of Jude cultivation. Abdul Mojit Talukdar writes about the language movement of 1952. He writes, Bangla Chai, Bangla Chai, Bangla Chai, Rashtra Bhasha Bangla Chai, Mukher Bhasha Bangla Chai, Mayer Bhasha Bangla Chai. Bhashar Jonno Zodhya Mater Dite Haiko Pran, Prandiya Bhasha Ibo Bangla Maya Pran. Again, he writes in another song, Hindu Muslim Buddha Christian Haure Agwan, Shonar Bangla Shadhin Kurbo, Jai Jodhi Zak Pran. So these songs clearly describe the national consciousness and struggle of Bangladeshi nation. Dear audience, kindly note, Bangabandhu visited Netrogana six times. Probably, probably this is the most visited subdivision of Bangladesh by Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman. His visits in 1953, uh, 57, 64, 69, 70, and 73 influenced the people of Netrogana in many ways. People's love towards him, towards his leadership is expressed in the songs of Netrogana people. He is also addressed as leader, boatman, and the father of the nation in, in the songs. Uh, here are some examples. Abdul Mojital writes, Shokto Kathir Nauka Khani, Shokto Nair Soya, Sheikh Mojibur Boita Dorse, Nair Pasai Boyare. Fosler Rahman writes, Are Wamar John of Humidesh, Gorboebar Bangabun Hurshonar Bangladesh, Barnovar Unoshotore, Gono Andolon, Sheikh Mojibur Choida Pate, Kaplo Shingashon, Ayub Buddur Shorazonjer, Holonazesh. Uh, Abdul Mati Talukda writes about the heinous killing of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman in 1975. He writes, Neta Mujib go, tumi arko to ghuma honi rabe, ek bar eshe dekhe jau go, tumar bang lakhi. Hakash kande, batash kande, kande re bangali, share shat koti manush kande ya kemne ghuma li. He writes in the latter part of the poem, um, song, tope ke no ghuma ya cho tungi parate. So, Glorification of and tribute to Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman is quite explicit in Baal songs of Netrukuna. I can quote many lines from different songs. Uh, finally, my argument is that anti communalist ideology is pictured in many Baal songs of this region. You know, Bangabandhu's one of the most significant ideology was anti communalism. I am not claiming that Bangabandhu's ideology inspired Baals of this region to write songs on anti communalism. But I can claim, or at least say that, people of this region live peacefully with people of other religion. They do not differentiate or categorize human beings based on religion, color, or caste. Whether a man is a Muslim or a Hindu doesn't matter. What matters is the person is a human being. The ideology is practiced by Baal devotees of Natrakuna. One of the greatest Baals of this area is Jalaluddin Khan. He writes, Hindu ki ba Muslim, shakto bodo Christian. Oh, sorry to interrupt, uh, dear presenter. You have two minutes left. Okay, thank you, sir. He writes, Hindu ki ba Muslim, shakto bodo Christian. Bidhir ka se shabai shaman papun er bichare. Komal Shah writes. I am not sure whether he is Komal Shah or Komal Mia. I got different name in different books. He writes, Bhabte ke le shabai shaman ke Hindu ke Muslim, jad bichare ke le pore deve deke shabai shaman. And Abdul Mati Tarato writes, Bangla Mother John Mohumi, Bangla Mother Pran, Akshate Kajkoribo, Mile Hindu Musulman. 
গাইব সবাই জয়ার গান মোরা এক মায়ের সন্তান ইন দিস রিজিয়ন ইট ইজ সিন দ্যাট মুসলিম বাউলস আর রাইটিং সংস অন হিন্দুইজম অ্যান্ড হিন্দু বাউলস আর রাইটিং সংস অন ইসলামিক ইস্যুজ রশিদ উদ্দিন জালাল উদ্দিন খাঁ উকিল মুন্সিদ সংস আর গ্রেটেস্ট এক্সাম্পলস অফ দিস আইডিয়া এগেন দিন শরৎ ডিসপাইট বিং এ হিন্দু রোড ইসলামিক সংস হু ইজ হিট আন ইসলামিক সঙ্গীত all these indicate peaceful coexistence of people of this region and this is why the idea of anti communalism is glorified in songs i would like to conclude by saying despite being illiterate or less educated netrokona region bauls participated in and reacted towards national and international incidents these bauls not only wrote songs on the sorts of sukh and soul but also on the beauty and struggle of bangladesh in addition they wrote and sang songs on different movements besides several visits of bangabandhu sheikh mujibur rahman to netrokona inspired and motiv- motivated the people of netrokona to a great extent they have expressed their love tribute and respect to the father of the nation through their songs their belief in anti communalism and secularism is also depicted in their songs the loud voice of how region bowls is almost unheard in academic discussion but i think they can contribute a lot to reread the nation of bangladesh from a distinct perspective thank you all thank you so much uh, for keeping to the time uh, we are going to go for our next presentation by uh, shimul bhattacharya who's an assistant professor uh, at southern university of bangladesh uh, her title is the comic presentation of uh, representation of chittagongian dialect in bangladeshi mainstream te- television drama the floor is yours thank you uh, am i audible yes you are uh, good afternoon from chatogram bangladesh uh, my topic title uh, my the paper of uh, the title of my paper is uh, the comic representation of chitagonian dialect in bangladeshi mainstream television drama uh here i am going to uh, present the central argument of my paper um can you see the slide here we can okay thank you uh many mainstream television uh, channels have broadcast dramas in various regional dialects for a decade particularly during eid vacation the dramas don't only attract uh, that particular reason instead they, they draw uh, people's attention from other reasons and communities as well they became sorry highly sorry to interrupt sorry oh, sorry to interrupt are you presenting your uh, second slide we we can't see your second slide we are just seeing the first slide that you put can you click on the second slide please the slide that you are reading here i i actually have not put all the uh, all the things here okay okay just... no problems okay yes. please go on okay so they became, became highly popular uh, as commercially successful comedies uh, in which uh, chitagonian speakers merely present comical depictions of their problems uh, but what do they represent uh these productions tend to raise uh, the audience's laughter in any possible way the subject plots of the dramas are very superficial and funny they want to tickle audiences into laughter unfortunately uh, the themes are never serious or related to any crisis history social or political or environmental significant issues instead the main target becomes the funny representation of chitagonian dialect even if some characters uh, speak the standard bangla language the chitagonian dialect is used as comic relief audiences from young generation are attracted to this type of drama and create uh, comment memes using uh, these uh, regional dialects most comedies are made using regional dialects of uh, noakhali borishal greater chatogram and silet Uh, in some of them people are uh, people from two districts are put together so that they can provide more laughter so here i put together some um, names of chitagonian dramas that were uh, that uh, were which were 
um, broadcast in mainstream televisions like Gaji TV, Deepto TV. Um, some names are here like Borishal versus Chittagong. Your, your slides can't be seen. That's what I was telling you. Your slides I'm can't be seen. I'm sharing it again. Yeah. Please. Is it visible now? It's visible, but we we just see the first slide of your presentation. We can't see the other slides, uh, the slides that you are uh, reading from right now. Can you see the list of Chittagonian dramas here? No, no, we, we can't. Uh, shall I carry on like this because yeah, yeah, please, uh, please carry on. Okay. Um, so extremely sorry for this interruption. Mm. So it is uh, noticeable that many renowned TV actors and actresses regularly perform in these dramas. Many of them uh, do not have sound knowledge of Chittaganian uh, dialect. They even cannot provide the tone of this language. According to uh, Ethnologue, 18th version, uh, 13 million people speak Chittagonian. Chattogram has a long and illustrious political cultural past. In undivided India, it was one of the epicenters of Swadeshi movement against British rule. The main seaport of Bangladesh is in Chattogram. So there could be many uh, exciting contents for drama uh, than simply uh, the funny subjects. Sociologist and cultural theorist uh, Stuart Hall stated that the media represents reality as well as creates it. In this case, Chattogram and its dialect are portrayed according to the interests of uh, middleman agencies who provide funding for the dramas. The reality is created the way the main mainstream TV producers want to see it and present it. The drama creates a stereotype about Chattogram and its people and dialect. The dramas give audiences the impression that the people of Chattogram do not have any sorrow or crisis. The reason do not have anything brave can have a serious focus. There are many slangs and vulgars in Chittagonian language. Many directors from Chattogram uh, are also making the same comedies. In the first conference of Shadda Bhasha Porishot uh, held on 5th of March, 2011, speakers like Dr. Na Jamal Nuzrul Islam, Dr. Jillu Rahman, uh, Dr. Moinul Mahmud, and uh, many others um, expressed their worry about uh, Chittagonian dialect observing the present practice of this dialect. They talked about their concern that uh, the educated parents do not uh, no longer converse in Chittagonian dialect with their children. And as a result, children cannot speak the language. They start to consider it as a substandard language that can ruin their aristocratic look or standard look. It seems that a particular class of Chittagonian speakers uh, uh, themselves feel inferior speaking it outside their close circle. This can endanger the language in future, as the Cambridge Handbook of Endangered Languages mentions that a language can be endangered if children will not probably speak it in 100 years. Then how can the mainstream TV drama contribute uh, to securing the language instead of damaging it? My suggestion is to make uh, dialect dramas with a serious plot regarding the reasons, history, culture, tradition, um, social or individual crisis. If the subject of a drama attracts the audience, understanding the language uh, will not be difficult. A Sileti song, Ailore Noya Daman, uh, Chittagonian song, Modu Hoi Hoi Bishhawaila are very popular among music lovers. Uh, not for uh, that it uh, they, bears, um, they bear any funny content, rather for its uh, their aesthetic uh, qualities, okay? So if a drama has meaningful, aesthetically rich and, um, uh, and creative content, the audience will accept it reasonably. Some characters could deliver dialogues in standard Bangla, others in Chittagonian. This way, the regional language would be more intelligible and uh, realistic. 
I want to mention uh, a drama named Suat. Uh, here I picked some pictures, but unfortunately I cannot show uh, the pictures. Uh, the drama was directed by Mamunur Rashid. Uh, it was uh, broadcast on Ekushi television in 2000. The drama's plot revolves around a ship MB Swat carrying weapons that arrives at Chottogram Harbor uh, on 14th of March, 1971. The ship's seamen and porters, on the other hand, revolted against the unloading. The Pakistani army killed some of them. In this drama, Bangla and Chittagonian are spoken simultaneously and Chittagonian dialect did not sound a bit funny because the content was rich and serious. Here, audiences can see that the Chittagonian dialect is someone's mother tongue also. And they shout, cry, or worry in this language. It does not simply provide fun. So uh, by making uh, this type of meaningful and aesthetically rich dramas, mainstream television channels can sensibly represent Chattogram and uh, other uh, regions. Thank you for listening to me. I would like to have your suggestion, observation, or if you have any queries, uh, feel free to share with me. Thank you. Okay, you had another couple of minutes left, but it's all right. Thank you for keeping to the time. Um, Actually, so, I was showing the slide, but I, I don't know why uh, you cannot see it. Perhaps Actually, already. there has been a global crash in Zoom facilities. That's why our uh, pictures can't be seen, our videos can't be uh, shown. So that is the problem, actually. Perhaps. Uh, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, but Sorry for my, from my part as well. No, it's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Uh, so we have heard three, four very uh, intriguing presentations, and we have already got some, uh, you know, questions and observations in the chat box. Uh, so the first question, I believe, is for uh, Mr. Shofula, our third presenter. So he said, uh, the, the question says, don't you think that celebrating Bangladesh or Bangladeshi culture is also a sort of practicing communalism in a broader sense? Uh, Shofiullah, how would you like to respond to that? Um, uh, thank you uh, for the question. Yes, we can say that this is also one type of practicing communalism, but this communal communalism is not bad. When you will practice your own culture, but at the same time, you uh, hinder other people, you stop other people to practice their own culture, then it will be bad. But if you practice your culture, if you practice your communalism, but if you don't stop other people from practicing their own, then I think it will not be bad. But I agree that yes, from a, in a broader sense, we can say practicing our own culture, I mean Bangladeshi culture is also one type of communalism. This is my okay. observation. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so there has been, there is a comment by K. Ahmed Alom uh, towards Mr. Joshim, uh, Joshimuddin. Uh, Mr. Joshim exploring folkloric elements in Shurjo Digalbari is exciting and the comparative st uh, study is really insightful. Uh, thank you for your uh, impressive presentation. And then uh, the same person has made another comment about uh, Ms. Nidhi Chakma's presentation, uh, and I would like Ms. Nidhi Chakma to respond to this. Uh, Ms. Nidhi Chakma's presentation is so nice and informative, but her expression, chauvinistic national anthem, is not acceptable as the anthem glorifies the country to which all Bengali, Chakma, etc. belong. So how would you like to respond uh, to this comment, Nidhi Chakma? Oh, yes. <clears throat> Thank you so much for the question. Um, yes. Uh, so the Bengali anthem we have, the first line that our national anthem says is, Ama Shonal Bangla, Ami Tomai Bhalo Bashi. I don't know um, how many indigenous uh, communities living in Bangladesh um, calls or address their motherland as Bangla. You know, um, so there is the problem when you say 
আমার সোনার বাংলা আমি তোমার ভালোবাসি মাইক্রোফোনস uh is there any observation or i uh, uh, this is ahmed yusuf ayatullah i was asking a question about uh, communalism and anti communalism so uh, as far as i uh, uh, understand that the bauls talk about a syncretic society they talk about universal human beings now it's it's not actually a question of good and bad uh, the way the uh, 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 presenter actually replied to my question i am not talking about good or bad uh, communalism i uh, my uh, my uh, query was about narrowing it down uh, i mean are you just narrowing down the baul communities to a particular extent are you contextualizing it in any sense i mean uh, the uh, the focus or the practice actually uh, covers the practices cover a w- w- wide range of areas of uh, human psychology and spirituality in, in, in if we talk about it like that so my question is that are, are you contextualizing it or narrowing it down to a particular uh, community or uh, for example uh, we, we can see their uh, i mean uh, glorification of our culture but are you narrowing it down or focusing on on the on the peripheral areas of their practices thank you uh, thank you i am basically trying to connect these marginalized people with our mainstream academic discussion this is just my attempt because uh, yes uh, in a broader sense we practice um, some specific uh, characteristics and notions but there are some marginalized people whom we do not count in our mainstream but they also think the same thing in their own uh, class so i have tried to uh, uphold their voice just i have tried to connect their voice with the with the mainstream this was my attempt all right yeah thank you for your question that was really an interesting question uh, to ask hello uh my name yes. is Dr. Russell can i can i ask something please please something? please okay. go ahead uh actually my question was to uh dashimul bhattacharya i like her presentation is fantastic because i'm a filmmaker and i'm also from chitagong so i know the very basics of that thing uh actually uh my question is uh, it's very uh, okay that uh, somehow uh, the uh, the the languages are treated in a very uh, funny and uh, in a very uh disturbance way uh in the national televisions and the other things but uh, uh we have a we have an observation like that uh, that uh, there is much uh, class of uh, the fact as you said that uh, the borishal and uh, the noakhali or the chitagong are treated as a funny thing but the dhakaya language is always treated as a sovereign yeah. uh, sorry uh, elite class uh, the dhakaya courtes and the, these are the fact but Mm-hmm. my point is uh, uh, we know the facts and it's very clear uh, there is always a discrimination uh, discrimination uh, attitude but 
Uh, when I see the Chittagong TV, the same things are happening by the Chittagongian people. They are making lots of funny uh, comedy uh, the same way uh, in the national televisions. But uh, if I uh, if I uh, ask that if I want to make a comedy film in for the Chittagongian audience, then what would be the, the thing? Because if it is a serious movie, uh, then it should have the uh, serious movie of film. It should have the uh, serious language style, uh, whatever uh, uh, the language is. But when it is funny, uh, it's a comedy, then what would do the directors? What they will do? They do the uh, the serious uh, uh, the language or serious uh, elements in the comedy movie? Because in CTV, in Chittagong televisions, we saw lots of people are making comedian, uh, comedy uh, drama and the things uh, that is actually based for the Chittagong audience. Then what would be the style it is my asking to uh, according I to the, the uh, i actually observed it that uh, chitagang uh, television also uh, treats the language that way they also present uh, comedy or comic elements through chitagonian dialect so uh, if uh, someone wants to uh, make a comedy film then <clears throat> comedy also uh, has some uh, some qualities okay so comedy also can um, create uh, awareness or can uh, create a meaningful sense uh, among audiences so we also see uh, comedies uh, for example three idiots uh, right. in very recently amit khan uh, i mean several years ago uh, it was very popular though it was comedy but it actually created a uh, uh, something meaningful vibe in audi in audience so that could be made or that could be done uh, but All I, right. I, what i what i saw that actually my asking was that uh, if we carnivalize the thing is uh, uh, actually this slapstick comedy uh, uh, happening only in the Chittagongian language or the Borisha language. Uh, I uh, What I felt as a maker, because I never intended to make those kind of things, uh, what I felt that it is actually the global scenario, not uh, the national scenario, that the people are actually habituated with this slapstick comedy type style. Either it is in Chittagongian language uh, or it is in Borisha language or the other things. So this is the whole national phenomenon. They became yeah. less serious uh, on the, uh, as you uh, term, the committee should have. The comedy we know much more uh, serious things uh, if we want to make a comedy film also. But the thing is actually, they, this slapstick attitude is actually become a, uh, uh, the national phenomenon. We are very much light-minded, that is the, the thing. Yeah, so I'm not the putting the all blames to the Chittagongian filmmakers or the uh, Chittagongian people who are making this or who are involved in this. So I think uh, this should be concerned as a national crisis also. Yes. So that was my point. Uh, sorry, I, I interrupted yes, because no. I wanted to share it to you because your no. topic is very much fantastic. I'm very yeah. glad to hear Thank from you. you. Thank you, Russell. Raz, uh, Rupi Thank you so Russell, much. Hi. Yeah, we have actually run out of our time. Yeah, um, sorry, uh, sorry for that. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Uh, Rafi Kulanor is also someone who's an independent, ac ac accomplished filmmaker. Thank you for your comments. Uh, so with that, I would like to conclude this session. We have had intriguing papers here. Thank you for your thoughts.